welcome to LEGO Animation School. I'm your host, Alvito Stefano. I've been making LEGO stop motion animations, commonly known as brick films, for over a decade. Today, I'm going to be sharing some of my knowledge to help you on your journey to becoming the best animator you can be. The subject for today is animation loops. In short, an animation loop is a specific segment of animation that is designed to repeat continuously without a definitive endpoint. Established animation studios have used them pretty much since animation came into existence to save on costs and streamline their production processes. This loop you're watching is made up of only 10 frames, or pictures, but I could let it keep playing for a minute, an hour, or a whole day. This works because the final frame seamlessly blends back into the first frame, creating the impression of continuous motion. I've used loops like this in my animations for many years and feel that brick films especially lend themselves to this sort of looping. So let's dig into how exactly it's done. There's plenty to talk about here, but it all boils down to three general points. Know your endpoint, keep it simple, and count your frames. First, you have to know where the loop ends, which for this to work has to also be where it begins. If you're aiming to make an infinitely loopable segment of animation, that means you must have a character or subject that is engaged in a repeated motion or action. You need to identify where you want the loop to start and then how you are going to execute the action and return to that start point again to complete the loop. For example, if you have, oh, let's say, a robot launching rockets, then the launch animation has to somehow return to the same place it began so he can keep endlessly launching rockets. And keep in mind, it's not just about resetting the character to their initial position. They also have to be located at exactly the same point on screen. Not a problem for our robot friend here because he's stationary, but when it comes to subjects that are moving, like walking or driving, then you need to make sure the camera moves with them. I won't be diving into camera movement in this video, but it's something you'll need to be aware of if you're trying to pull off a looping shot. Next, keep it simple. My animations have some complex shots with a lot of moving parts. These are great for making the world come to life, but generally you don't want this level of complexity if you're creating an animation loop. At its simplest, a loop can consist of just two repeated frames, like this example. This can cut down on filming time, but it's not too visually interesting. Generally, I avoid shooting loops that are this simple because of how painfully obvious it is that's a looped segment. Part of the magic of animation loops is being able to hide from the audience that you are looping at all, and that requires a little more complexity. It's all about finding that sweet spot of being complex enough to be visually interesting, but not so complex that it takes you a ridiculous amount of time to film. Always ask yourself the question, how much time am I saving myself by making this shot a loop? Which brings us to the last point. You have to count your frames. The good news is that most of the time, the math is easy. The standard walking cycle will loop every 10 frames, so you just have to take 10 pictures and you're done. The tricky part is when you have two or more looping actions happening simultaneously, which have different animation lengths. To illustrate this, take a look at these two objects, which I will arbitrarily name Lefty and Righty. Lefty likes bouncing up and down, and each up and down cycle takes six frames to complete. Righty also likes to bounce up and down, but it takes them eight frames. If I want them both bouncing at the same time, how many frames do I need to capture such that both their bouncing cycles end at the same time and allow me to loop the footage? The answer is neither 6 nor 8, but rather 24. Let's take a look. As you can see, we indeed need 24 frames to complete the loop, much more than either individual cycle alone. This number isn't random. In fact, it is very easy to determine. You just need to calculate the least common multiple of the two cycles. In a nutshell, the least common multiple of two or more numbers is the smallest number among all common multiples of the given numbers. If you struggle with this concept, that's totally fine. There are online calculators that can calculate the least common multiple for you. As it happens, the least common multiple of 6 and 8 is 24. Now, in my opinion, 24 frames is a perfectly reasonable amount of work to get an infinitely loopable clip. But imagine 
if you added just one more repeating motion to this loop, and say it takes 11 frames. Well, the least common multiple of 6, 8, and 11 is 264. In other words, you would have to capture 264 frames to complete the loop. Certainly doable, but probably not worth the effort anymore. This is why it's important to crunch the numbers before you start filming so you know exactly how many frames you will need. In summation, animation loops can be tricky to get the hang of, but keep things simple, do your math, and have a game plan going in, and they can save you a lot of time when creating your brick films. If you enjoyed this video and are interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing for more tutorial content and feel free to suggest future topics in the comments below. One last thing, most of the footage I used in this tutorial was from my ongoing action comedy series, The Adventures of Tyler and Henry. The latest installment took me five years to make and is 25 minutes long, but I would recommend starting with the first episode as it's a better entry point to the series for the uninitiated. So thank you for your interest and I will see you in the next video.